Okay. Hey, guys. <clears throat> we are live. <clears throat> I pray in Jesus' name I don't forget some of the points I want to mention before we begin. Welcome, everyone. Thank you for joining me. I know you don't have to be here. <clears throat> you could be doing other things, but you're here. Not so much for me, but because you're trusting that the Lord Jesus will use me to glorify his name and the power of the Holy Spirit. Because the Lord Jesus doesn't need us, we need him. Amen? <clears throat> Someone was saying, uh, yeah, when in heaven, I'll have a one-on-one -on -one convo with you. Let me let me share some with you. When we get to heaven by the grace of Jesus Christ, I'm the last person you want to talk to. Because in heaven, you're going to see Jesus Christ in his glorified physical body. God the Father appealing, appearing visibly with his son. You're going to see the angelic hosts. And you're going to see some of the greatest men and women that God has ever raised up, especially from the biblical period. You're going to see the Apostle Paul, the Apostle Peter, the Blessed Mother of our Lord. I'm the last person you want to talk to when you get to heaven, right? <clears throat> Revelation 22, 13. Good to see you, brother. I miss you. Lord bless you and prosper you for his glory. Have you been listening to these sessions, Revelation 22, 13? Right? Hopefully, by the grace of God, by the power of the Holy Spirit, it will be very educational, very in-depth, very challenging, right? Hopefully, we don't get it, it emotional anymore, right? Remember, big boys are not supposed to cry. No, we said we got that thing. We know that we're right. I'm looking forward to seeing Jesus. Amen, amen. Uh, hey, what's up, 1611? On my way to heaven. Well... Until the return of Jesus Christ to the earth, heaven is not on the new earth. If you die right now, St. Dennis, you enter this dimension called heaven where God the Father appears visibly. Jesus Christ is dwelling in his physical glorified body, and the souls and spirits of all who died in Jesus Christ are dwelling in his presence with angels. Yep, because my wife is a JW. All right. Hope these series will bless you, JR, because I'm going to give you a lot of meat to use. Do some of my liberal Christian. I don't get it. Sam, how can I start politics in defense against Islam heresy? I'm studying. I'm studying theology, especially the Trinity and the Incarnation. I'll try to answer that in a minute. All right. Okay, welcome, everyone. Uh, I'm going to just, again, repeat some things I've stated before, and then we'll begin trusting the Spirit to fill me because I need the power, the strength of the Holy Spirit and the blood of Jesus to cleanse me of my own sin and perfections and flesh. Truly, I ask the Lord to help me to walk in the Spirit. Keep praying for me, guys. Uh, as if you've seen pictures of me, I've lost a lot of weight from about two years ago. I was close to 340. I'm down around 250, but I'm still not where I need to be because I still got love handles. Uh, there are certain pictures I look at. I still got those love handles. Yuck. Pray Jesus Christ, my Lord, helps me to just lose all this weight and keep it off. Keep it off permanently and lose it sooner than later and get my health back. But more importantly... The Lord helps me to be holy for his glory, holy for his glory in love with Jesus. I haven't been able to hit the weights, so that's why you can see I'm not as pumped, but still I'm going to get there. All right? Don't hate. Don't hate, people. Don't hate. We were saved long, long. Come on, brother. Come on, brother. What you going to do, brother? Yeah, I know. Uh, I, I hate push-ups. I hate push-ups, but they're some of the best exercises you can do. Brother. In fact... Pre-Christian days, let me just share some things before we begin, and I hope it doesn't bore people. Pre-Christian days, I used to be 220 pounds of muscle. My stomach was flat. Didn't have abs yet. I was getting close there. Stomach was flat, and I never took steroids. I wish I had those pictures to prove it because you guys, you haters, are not going to believe it, right? So I had a V-taper. Now I have an upside-down V. <laughs> In fact, my chest was so huge, I used to be able to put a cup on my chest like now. That's my upper pec. Now, how many of you haters that are, you know, fitter than me? Can you do this, haters? What you gonna do, brother? Hello, Hogan, man. Yeah. Anyway, someone was saying, uh, "What was it?" Choose Jesus. Said, "Hey, has anyone found Sam a wife yet? Why? So she can be tortured and burdened, living with me. Right? Great is the reward of the woman." who chooses to marry me because great will be her, her sacrifice be. In fact, she'll get a taste of purgatory. <laughs> no, 
No, that's not funny. Why are you hating? Stop hating. Okay. With that said, let me button up my shirt. I don't want to show my hairy, gorgeous pecs. Hairy. See, look at this. Hairy. No. I know. I got issues, man. I'm telling you, Jesus Christ, our Lord, saves the weird people, you know, the people with serious issues, to transform them for his glory, right? Some smoking hot sexists. Anyway, let me repeat two things. Number one, number one, please do not bombard the comment section with reams of posts, 50,000 word posts. Hold on, hold on. Hey, uh, friend, I'm live right now, and I'm picking up the phone live. What's going on? No, I don't need to call you, sir, but I'm live. Listen to me, okay, sir? Sahih Christian. All right, now bye. Okay, now, please do not bombard the comment section with reams of posts, 50,000 word comments. As I said, I don't have time to go through these comments. I will delete your comment and block you. <clears throat> and secondly, why do I allow comments in the live stream and why do I interact? I want to make it clear because a lot of people get distracted saying, well, that's a distraction. Well, let me repeat the purpose. Why <clears throat> I allow the comments in my live stream and I interact. The reason why I do that is because I'm going to repeat myself in order to make sure that the people listening understand the point. So you're going to hear me say, did you get it? Is it clear? Because I'm trusting the Holy Spirit will help me to make these issues very clear and simple to understand so that you guys can see the depth, the beauty, the majesty <clears throat> Of the word of God, how deep, how beautiful, how majestic God's word is. And also when it comes to, let's see, these core doctrines, like the explicit, irrefutable proof that God is triune, that Jesus is God in the flesh. So that's why I allow the comments so I can interact with you. Did you get it? Are you confused? <clears throat> Do you need clarification? That's why. But there is a drawback because then you have some people here who are not here to listen, but to attack, to mock, to distract, or to preach a sermon because they want attention. So that's the reason why I don't disenable the comments because I want to interact with you to make sure you're understand, understanding these issues by the power of the Holy Spirit using me for the glory of Christ. Because again, anything good, anything perfect, all our successes from God's perspective is the work of his grace. It's the grace of the triune God, the work of the Holy Spirit enabling me to teach the word correctly, interpret the scriptures correctly, and enable you to understand what the scriptures actually teach for the glory of Christ. And he gives us the power then to live the word of God for the glory of Jesus, right? What we contribute is our errors, imperfections, and sins, <clears throat> right? So that's why I don't disenable or disable, I should say, the comment section because I want to make sure you're getting the point, right? You're understanding the issue because I'm here to serve you. And again, I want to be clear. Jesus Christ doesn't need me. He can stop me from teaching. And Jesus Christ is still God on the throne and will still continue to build his church and preserve his church for his glory by the power of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Franz Tom, Toma. It's interesting. A lot of my brothers and sisters love me and thank God for me for the gift he's given me. And I pray God will give me the power of the Holy Spirit to use it with a pure heart, pure motives, sanctified by the Spirit, washed in the blood of Jesus Christ for his glory. But then you have so many haters. Like someone yesterday contacted me and asked me a very stupid question. Do you confess Jesus Christ in the flesh? <clears throat> and then he says, I'm going to expose you. You're, you're, you're doing it for money, you know, and, and that's not the real reason for your divorce. And I'm going to expose you. And see, such dogs don't understand that when you act like a dog, I'm going to muzzle you like a dog. So you're not going to win everyone. Not everyone's going to love you. Not everyone's going to care for you. You're going to have people who out of envy and hate, they're going to attack you, right? That's fine. And that's another thing, real quickly. This is why God has raised up a variety of brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ with different personalities and temperaments and why certain people will be drawn to a particular preacher but not drawn to others. For example, many of you will enjoy the way I teach. Many can't stand the way I teach. I don't blame them. Many love the way Anthony Rogers teaches, and many don't like the way he teaches. Many love the way David Wood presents his position, and others don't. 
This is why God in his infinite wisdom and power has raised up a variety of teachers and apologists with various temperaments and personalities and <clears throat> moves certain people to be drawn to a particular preacher teacher, right? Many people love James White. Some can't stand his approach, right? Many love Christian Prince. Some think he's, so this is how it works. So I know not everyone is going to like my personality or agree with my method. So here's what I say to you. And I say this in love. You don't need to listen to me, right? Jesus doesn't need me. You don't need me. You need the Holy Spirit of God. So pray to the Holy Spirit. Ask the Holy Spirit to guide you to whatever teacher the Spirit wants to use in your life to help you grow. You don't need me, honestly. I am not the greatest gift, the greatest teacher. And the church doesn't need me. We need Jesus. We need the chime God. We need the Holy Spirit. And we're expendable. I'm a vapor. I can die tonight. And Jesus is still God, and the Holy Spirit will still be building up the church and raising up men and women to glorify Christ. Amen? Right? Let me prove to you that we're expendable and we're a vapor. This is what I just read. Right now, on Yahoo News, this is what I just read. Country singer Kylie Ray Harris. Guys, listen to this. A reminder, one heartbeat away, we're a vapor that... Here today, gone tomorrow, and we're going to stand before Jesus because he is God, he is alive, and death is not the end of us. Yahoo News. I just saw it right now. Country singer Kylie Ray Harris dies after car crash at the age of 30. Kylie Ray Harris, a country singer from Texas, has passed away after a three-vehicle crash in northern Mexico. She was 30. Did you catch it? You see it? There it goes. What's the point, folks? You are a vapor. I'm a vapor. Christ doesn't need us. We need him. And we're one heartbeat away. We can die right now. Now, I hope she knows Jesus Christ because the moment she died, the Bible says Christ is risen. He's alive to prove it. The moment she died, her spirit left her body and hopefully it entered the presence of Christ where she's more alive, pain free. As a reminder to every one of us, Christ doesn't need us. We need him. And so if my particular method of teaching, my temperate, temperament doesn't bode well with you, ask the Holy Spirit to guide you to someone else. Honestly. Right? That's why God has raised up a variety of teachers with a variety of personalities and temperaments to draw specific people to be used for the glory of Christ. Right? So is that clear? Is that clear? Now, with that said, hopefully in time, I'm going to rival Hater Wood. We're going to get about a 1,000 listening to me. Um, I'm just jealous. You know, I'm envious like that. I need a, love, a lot of love and attention, right? Michelle El Saif, be patient, brother. Michelle El Saif, debate who, St. Dennis? Debate who? Be patient, brother. If you want an answer, the best way... To learn how to do apologetics, yeah, hit the like button. The best way to learn how to do apologetics, Michelle El Saif, is study the articles we've produced on answeringislam.net, answeringislamblog.wordpress.com. Watch all of David Wood's videos and all the other people who've done videos for his channel and watch my videos. And I promise you, you have everything you need to fully equip you by the power of the Holy Spirit to be an apologist witnessing to Muslims. And by the way, someone's saying, do you write in your Bible? Yes, I do. Here it is. And guys, just to let you know, this is my personal copy of the Bible. I believe what I have right here, this is me. Don't condemn me. I have the perfect words of God in English. The perfect words, words of God in English. And guess what version it is? The KJV. This is my personal Bible. This is the word of God. This is what I study right here. Okay. So just want you to know, and I do write in it. I leave notes in it. Right. See, I leave notes in it. Right there. Just let you know. So, okay. So you can write in it. So hopefully by the grace of God, we get a few more to get our usual number. 
Let me just ask the Father of our Lord Jesus to bless this time. Father, we love you. Lord Jesus, we love you. Holy Spirit, we love you. I truly know, Father, you don't need me. You don't need any of us. We need you. We need your Holy Spirit to use us to glorify Jesus Christ. In fact, at times, Father, <clears throat> we prove faithless. And Father, I ask that you have mercy on me. Give me victory over my flesh. Please help me to crucify my flesh, to resist my flesh, to conquer my flesh by the power of your Holy Spirit. And forgive me for my shortcomings and failures. And Father, I ask that you wash us in the blood of Jesus and fill us with your Holy Spirit. And Father, bless them. They're not here for me. They're here because they trust that your Spirit will speak through me for the glory of Jesus Christ. So grant me clarity of thought and speech, perfect recall of the Scriptures, and interpret them correctly. And Protect me from stammering and confusion. And Father, bless them with wisdom and knowledge and understanding from your Holy Spirit. And fill us with power and life from your Spirit to live the words of God perfectly. To become more like Jesus. To worship Jesus more perfectly. And to be more devoted to Jesus, Father. Please, I need that especially. Teach us how to pray and how to sing and how to worship. How to read your word. How to live it and apply it. And how to preach to others and love others enough to preach the word, Father. May Jesus Christ increase in us, and may I decrease. And Father, please fight for us and fight for me and use me continually. Save me from these trials so they will not hinder me from being used to glorify you. Open more doors so I can glorify you and fight for my children and protect them, Father, and provide for their needs, Lord. We love you, Father. Teach me how to love your people with the love of Christ. We love you, Lord Jesus, and we love you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. I don't know. Somebody sending me a message. I'm not going to open up right now. Okay. Part two of Is Jesus the Archangel Michael? What I'm going to do is I give a, an exposition of Hebrews chapter one. I'm going to give an ex, ex, exposition as the Lord loosens my tongue of Hebrews one because Hebrews one is one of the most powerful chapters refuting, in fact, decimating this lie that Jesus Christ is the spirit creature called the Archangel Michael. Good to see you, my brother, Al. I hope you've been listening to the other live streams. I'm sure, I'm sure you're going to be blessed. And Al, pray for me, brother. Lord willing, if God opens the door, I'm moving to your neck of the woods. I'm relocating. So pray God will bless it, and I can start a new chapter there. Good to see you. You guys don't know Al Dario. She's a dear brother who loves the Lord. I love him and his family. God bless them. And also thank Protestant believer and first and last for helping me to help you by posting verses. And thank our brother, Idiotai Apologetics. Please subscribe to his channel and pray that God will move him to produce more videos because he is actually hosting me, being gracious enough, he and his family, to stay at his place so I don't have to get a hotel, which I can't afford. All right? Now, with that said, I'm going to give a full exposition, at least I'll try to, of Hebrews chapter 1. Hebrews chapter 1, Yeah. Michelle Al Saif, if the Bible and English is hard for you to read, I know this is not going to be popular with some people here, <clears throat> then do read a translation that's easy for your tongue for, because I want you to stand the word and then move your way to more accurate translations. Yeah, Sahih Christian, that's him. Al, Sahih Christian, yat maile. Sahih Christian, ila Robert Flame. So, Al, Sahih Christian, Robert Flame. So, Sai Christian, say hi to Al Dariush. Al Dariush says hi to Sai Christian. A lot of Syrians here, but there's only one Jilu. That's me. All right. Let's begin. But I want to answer a question that was asked of me in the comment section. How can I say, guys, I'm going to need your undivided attention? Right? How can I say that Jesus Christ is the angel of Yahovah, the angel of God in the Hebrew Bible? When Hebrews 1.5 says that God has never said to any angel, you are my son, today I have begotten you, something he said of Jesus Christ. Okay, please understand the objection. Are you guys ready? You with me there? Here's the objection. How can Jesus be the angel of God that appears in the Old Testament, right? In the Old Testament. When Hebrews 1.5 says, to which of the angels did God ever say, you are my son, today I've begotten you, or I will be his father, he'll be my son. Meaning, G meaning God has never said to any angel, you are my son, I'm your father, but he did say it to Jesus Christ. 
So if God doesn't say it to any angel, but he said it to Jesus, isn't this proof that Jesus could not be the angel of Yehovah, the angel of Yahweh, the angel of God in the Old Testament? Do you understand the objection? You hear me there? Andrew got it. Okay. I'm going to use some technical terms, but I'm going to explain it. This is why I want you to pay attention as I trust the Holy Spirit enable you to understand. There's a difference between an angel that's created to be an angel, who is an angel by nature, and someone who assumes the position of an angel. The book of Hebrews is talking about spirit creatures who by their very nature were created to be messengers and servants. Because the word angel in Hebrew malach and the word angel in Greek angelos, right, means messenger. Hebrews is dealing with a group of spirit creatures who by their very nature were created to be messengers and servants. What I call created messengers or creatures who were created to be angels by nature. You understand the difference here? Guys, St. Dennis and the gentleman you're debating, stop the debates, Enoch and St. Dennis. Notice you're allowing the devil to use you to fight with one another and debate so you don't focus on what matters. In Jesus' name, rebuke that. Okay. There is a difference between, there's a difference between someone assuming the role of a messenger, the position of, of a messenger, and spirit creatures who are created to be messengers by nature, that their very nature is to be a messenger and servant of God. Are you with me there? Exactly, Andrew Martin. You understand the difference? Okay, let me prove to you that in the book of Hebrews, the author of Hebrews is referring to spirit creatures who by their very nature were created to be messengers because the word angel in Hebrew and Greek means messenger. These are spirit creatures who were created to be messengers and servants. Hebrews chapter 1 verse 7 and verse 14. Hebrews 1 verse 7 and verse 14. Now follow with me because I'm going to now explain the difference between Jesus appearing as an angel and these creatures. Now here goes. Thanks, Pro Thank the Protestant. Read with me. I need you guys to read now. And of the angels, he saith, who maketh his angel spirits. See, he made them to be spirits. He created them to be spirits. And his ministers a flame of fire. So these are spirits who are created to be servants, spirit creatures to serve. Hebrews 1.14. Are they not all ministering spirits? Spirit beings created to be ministers and servants sent forth to minister, to serve, for them who shall be heirs of salvation. So do you see which angels the author of, author of Hebrews has in mind? He's referring to spirit creatures who are created to be messengers and servants by their very nature. That's what they were created to be. That's their nature, to serve and also to be messengers of God. Clear? Hebrews 1, 7, 14. Now let's go to Revelation 22, 8 to 9, because I'm going to explain the difference between Jesus being the angel of God. Revelation 22, 8 to 9. I have to make this clear because this question was raised, and I want to make it clear so that we don't get confused. Revelation 22, 8 to 9. And I, John, saw these things and heard them. When I heard and seen, I fell down to worship before the feet of the angel, which showed me these things. Then saith he unto me, See thou, do it not. Do not worship me. For I am thy fellow servant. See, I am nothing more than a servant like you, and of thy brethren. I'm a servant, a slave like you and your brothers, right? And of them which keep the sayings of this book, worship God. Do you see what this angel said? This spirit creature says, That's all I am, is a servant by nature. You see? So don't worship me. I was created to be a messenger, a servant. You with me there? I just want to make sure you, you, you're getting it because the admins will take care of the nuisances. They'll block them, right? 
So if Gerald Perry keeps talking about the King James Version and doesn't focus on the topic, I love this brother, but he's, he, yes, he wants to be blocked. Let's focus. Okay. What's the difference with Jesus? Here is, yes, that's the argument. Sugar. Here's the difference. I'm going to give you some fancy theological terms. Theophanic angel. Here you go. Theophanic angel or Christophanic angel. Now, what do these fancy terms that theologians came up with to sound smart mean? A theophanic angel means God appearing as an angel. Christophanic angel means Christ appearing as an angel. There's a difference between a spirit creature who's created to be a messenger and servant by nature and God appearing as a messenger or as an angel, assuming the role of an angel without being an angel by nature. See the difference? Do you understand the difference now? It's just like when in the Old Testament, God appears as a man. He appears as a man, but he's not a man by nature. We know humans are creatures. Men are creatures. So who would argue that just because God appeared as a man in the Old Testament, that means he's a creature? Christophany means an appearance of Christ. Theophany means an appearance of God. So when I say theophany, I mean an appearance of God. But which person of God? That's If it's Jesus, you say Christophany, an appearance of Christ, right? You with me there? Yes. In Genesis 18, JR, Jehovah God appeared as a man with two other men that were angels. Who would argue that because God appeared as a man, looked like a man, ate like a man, that he's a creature? Because in the Old Testament, he didn't become human. He wasn't born human. He wasn't born as a babe and didn't add another nature to his person. He simply appeared in human form. So God can appear as a man and not be a creature by nature. God can assume the role of an angel and not be an angelic creature. You see the difference now, right? No, burning bush wasn't the father. Burning bush was Jesus Christ, as Petrina. It was Jesus Christ in the burning bush, not the father. Are you with me there? Do you understand now the difference between spirit creatures who by their very nature were created to be messenger servants? Yes, without form, Petrina. He took the form of fire. Let's not argue that. Go read it. It says the angel of God, Exodus 3, 2. That's not the father. Jesus appearing as a messenger of God, taking the role of an angel, a messenger, doesn't mean that he's a creature who was created to be a messenger. He is the uncreated son of God who's more than a messenger. He's the God of all creation, the God of all angelic creatures. But he can assume the role and the position of any creature that he's created. He can assume human form in the Old Testament and not be human because he only became man when he condescended to enter the blessed womb of his blessed mother and take a physical body, human nature, from her blessed womb while she was a virgin by the power of the Holy Spirit. Or he can assume the shape of fire without being fire by nature. Exodus 3, 2, right? Is that clear? Do you understand the difference between Christ appearing as an angel and spirit creatures who are created to be angels, servants by nature. Clear? Yes, first and last. Incarnation is different in that when Christ entered the womb of his blessed mother, he actually became human by nature. He was born as a baby truly became human, had a flesh and blood body, and grew as a human being because now he took on another nature. In the Old Testament, he didn't become human by nature. He simply assumed a form that looked human. He appeared as a man. Jacob, I hope you're not challenging me about Jesus in John 14, 28, 1 Corinthians 11, 3, because I've just adjust these, and they don't support the Aryan blasphemy. Exactly, Andrew, right? It's like to use a very bad analogy, 
I can assume the identity of a policeman, or even worse, I can assume the identity of Frankenstein by putting on a costume, but it doesn't mean I'm Frankenstein by nature. Now, Sai Christian is Frankenstein by nature because he's he's hideous to look at, right? Or I can don a Hulk Hogan outfit, put on, you know, <laughs> you get the point, right? All right. Everyone with me there? If that point was clear, then we can break down Hebrews 1. To use Hebrews 1 as proof, Joe's witnesses are wrong, and these cultists like Greg Stafford are wrong. Jesus is not the creature called Archangel Michael. Are we ready? It's going to take me several sessions to break down Hebrews 1. Just trying to finish the two first, two first verses is going to take me maybe the entire session. Let's look at Hebrews 1, verses 1 or 2. Are you ready now? Are you ready for me? Are you praying the Holy Spirit will fill me to give you meat? I'm not vegan, friend. I'm a meat eater. By the way, Al, Lord willing, if God opens the door for me to live there, I'm going to be doing weekly Bible studies. So that means we're going to start doing Bible studies together. So pray for that, Al. Okay. Okay, thank you, soldier of Christ. I hope that's a compliment. Okay. God who at sundry times and in diverse manners, meaning in times past, at different times in the past, and in various ways, spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets. Now, let me break down verse 1. Let's post verse 1 one more time. Verse 1 one more time. Exactly, Lisa. The God who fought Jacob appeared as a man with a tangible body, but he wasn't actually human by nature. He wasn't a creature. And Hosea tells us that was the angel of the Lord. Now let's break this down. God who at sundry times, meaning times past, at different times, diverse manners in various manners, spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets. So notice here it says, when God wanted to communicate to his people, he did so by sending them prophets. But how did he communicate his revelation to these prophets? That's the question. It says in various ways he communicated to the fathers through the prophets. Let's look at how God communicated to the prophets and through the prophets to his people. Are you ready for the meat? Numbers 12, 6 to 8. Numbers 12, 6 to 8. It's going to take me a while to unpack this, okay? So bear with me. I don't want to bore you, but at the same time, I'm not here to entertain you. I want to educate you. Numbers 12, 6 to 8. Watch the meat. Okay. Okay, read with me. And he said, Jehovah said to Miriam and Aaron, hear now my words. If there be a prophet... Among you, I, Yehovah, will make myself known unto him in a vision. Here are the various ways. In a vision, and I will speak unto him in a dream. Did you catch it? When God wants to speak to a prophet, he'll appear to him in a dream or a vision. What's the difference? Dream is usually what we refer to when you're sleeping. A vision is when you're awake and you have a vision where God projects to your mind's eye something that others do not see, right? But now notice another way in which he speaks. Notice another way in which he speaks. I'll either speak in a vision or a dream or this way. Watch here. Let me blow your mind away. And if you guys want me to do a session on this, I will. Right? My servant Moses is not so. In other words, I don't just speak to Moses in a vision or a dream, who is faithful in all mine house. With him will I speak mouth to mouth. With him I speak in person, face to face, mouth to mouth, even apparently, and not in dark speeches, and the similitude of Jehovah shall he behold. Did you catch what he said? Moses is different. I don't just speak to him in a dream or in a vision. I actually have come down in time and space. I actually have entered the world. I have left this dimension heaven and have come down into this world visibly to speak to him in time and space, face to face in front of all of you. Did you catch the difference? With Moses, I don't simply appear to him in a dream or in a vision. 
I've actually come down in the world, in time and space, at a specific location, and I'm appearing visibly to him so that now you also are witnessing it. Did you know if I unpack Exodus, and I'm going to show you this, I'm going to prove it to you. The story of Exodus is the story of heaven itself coming down to the earth to assist Moses and Israel. The Trinity came down to the earth during this time. And all of the angelic hosts came down. All of heaven came to the earth during the Exodus. Did you know that? Now, do you want me to prove to you, do you want me to prove to you that God appeared in actual time and space in the earth so that even Israel knew God was on earth? Let me prove it to you. Let, let me prove it to you. Let's go to Exodus 33, 7 to 11. Yeah, can we send this wicked son of Satan on his merry way? He's a heretic, Joey W., who's just preaching to the choir, not knowing that I already destroyed his argument that Jesus is the Archangel Michael, another son of Satan. Exodus 33, 7 to 11. Admins, come on, help me out first and last. Get rid of these trolls, these sons of Satan. Exodus 33, 7 to 11. Let's read. Watch here. Read with me. I told you it's going to take me a while to unpack this. Exodus 33, 7 to 11. Okay. And Moses took the tabernacle and pinched it without the camp, afar off from the camp, and called it the tabernacle of the congregation. And it came to pass that everyone which sought Yahovah went out <clears throat> unto the tabernacle of the congregation, which was without the camp. And it came to pass when Moses went out unto the tabernacle that all the people rose up and stood every man at his tent door and looked after Moses until he was gone into the tabernacle. Okay, watch here. And it came to pass as Moses entered into the tabernacle, watch what they saw. The cloudy pillar descended and stood at the door of the tabernacle and Yahovah talked with Moses and all the people saw the cloudy pillar. They saw something visible. They saw what looked like a cloud, a pillar shaped like a cloud, and they knew that the one in the cloud was their God. And all the people rose up and worshipped every man in his tent door, and Yahovah spoke, spake unto Moses face to face as a man speaketh unto his friend. <clears throat> and he turned again into the camp, but his servant Joshua, the son of Nun, a young man, depart not out of the tabernacle. Did you guys catch it? Did the Israelites see something visible before their eyes? Yes. In the daytime, they saw a pillar shaped like a cloud. And at night, it, it looked like a pillar of fire, right? Notice they didn't see a figure, a shape. They saw a cloud and they knew someone was in the cloud. But notice Moses entered the cloud inside the cloud to speak to God face to face seeing God's shape in the cloud. Did you catch it? Are you there before I move on? Okay. Let me give you further proof. Israel saw a cloud appear in time and space. They didn't see the shape of the one in the cloud. That they didn't see. Only Moses was allowed to see the shape because he entered the cloud. Let me prove it to you. Exodus 24, 9 to 11. Exactly, Andrew Martin. I'm telling you, this guy is close to worshiping Jesus again. He understands the Bible better than many Christians. Exodus 24, 9 to 11. Watch here. I got to take time, excuse me, to unpack this. Then went up Moses and Aaron, Nadab, Abihu, and 70 elders of Israel. Watch here. And they saw the God of Israel. Now notice, the Israelites are in the wilderness. Only these are allowed to be at the foot of the mountain. So they're closer. Because they're closer, they get to see more of God. They see enough of God that they see his feet and what looked like pavement under his feet that he was riding on. 
reap. And they saw the God of Israel, and there was under his feet, as it were, a paved work of a sapphire stone, and as it were, the body of heaven in his clearness. And upon the nobles of the children of Israel, he laid not his hand. Also they saw God and did eat and drink. Do you understand what you just read? The Israelites are in the wilderness. Far away, they only see a cloud. These 70 with Aaron, Nadab, Abihu, are by the foot of the mountain where the cloud descends, so they see more of God. They see God's feet riding on what looked like pavement. And it says God didn't stretch his hands against them because it was believed if you saw God, you would die. But God in his mercy didn't strike them dead. He allowed them to see a visible form and what looked like pavement that he was riding on. Wow. But now look at the honor given to Moses. Look at the honor given to Moses. Let's read 12 to 18. Moses was allowed to enter the cloud, sit there with God, seeing God visibly in a shape, and speak with him face to face in the cloud for 40 days and 40 nights, an honor that God didn't give to anyone else. Exodus 24, 12 to 18. And Yahovah said unto Moses, Come up to me into the mount and be there. Send dread Lord on his merry way to his father Satan. Come up to me into the mount and be there, and I will give thee tables of stone and a law and commandments which I have written, that thou mayest teach them. Now watch. And Moses rose up and his minister Joshua, and Moses went up into the mount of God, and he said unto the elders, Tarry ye here for us, until we come again unto you, and behold, Aaron and her are with you. If any man have any matters to do, let him come unto them. And Moses went up into the mountain, and a cloud covered the mount. Guys, get ready to be blown away. The honor that the Trinity gave to Moses in their love for Moses. Right? Watch here. And the glory of Yahovah abode upon Mount Sinai, and the cloud covered it six days. Notice, six days. Okay? And the seventh day he called unto Moses out of the midst of the cloud. On the Sabbath day. He had to wait six days. And the Sabbath day he entered the cloud. And the sight of the glory of Yahovah. Now notice how the Israelites saw the cloud. They're in the wilderness. They're far away. So what they're seeing from a distance is what looked like devouring fire on top of the mount in the eyes of the children of Israel. See, it's giving me chills. And Moses went into the midst of the cloud and got him up into the mount. And Moses was in the mount 40 days and 40 nights. Wow. You see how God honored his servant Moses? God appears visibly in a cloud, right? Where the Israelites see the cloud visibly, the set on the mount. And they see what looks like fire and thunder and lightning. Then they see Moses enter that cloud and remain 40 days. Now you tell me if you're Israelite, won't you be blown away to see a cloud and see the honor God gives to your prophet Moses and that he's the only one allowed to enter that cloud and remain in that cloud 40 days to 40 nights. Do you see the love that God gave to, to Moses? Do you see why the Jews swear by Moses? Because the honor that God gave to Moses. And that's why Numbers 12, 8. Why do you think Numbers 12, 8, God was rebuking Miriam and Aaron for complaining against Moses? Because there, God says, how dare you complain against him? Don't you see how honorable this man is in my sight? I let him speak to me face to face and see my shape. How dare you accuse him before me? Do you understand how honorable this man is? Do you understand how much I love him? He enters the cloud and sees my shape and stands before me face to face. And you dare would bring an accus accusation against him? Now, if I show you that it says he's a prophet, do you want, okay, anyway. Yeah, there's guys more. You with me there? Okay. So... How does this tie in with Hebrews 1? This is how it ties in with Hebrews 1. In the past, God spoke to the Israelites at various times in various manners. 
and he used prophets to do so. Now, how did God speak to prophets? For prophets, he'd appear in dreams or visions. But in the case of Moses, in the case of Moses, the Godhead came down in time and space, visibly, appearing visibly in a cloud, a pillar that looked like a cloud and fire by night. So the Israelites saw this pillar and knew our God is here with us visibly in time and space. And then tell Moses, come inside, Moses, because now I'm going to honor you by allowing you to see my shape. You see that? But God didn't just do that for Moses. He also did it for another prophet before Moses. And he did it for his nephew. You know who? God actually appeared in time and space, in actual time and space. You know who else? Abraham. Genesis 18 and 19. God appeared in time and space with two angels that appeared as men, sat before Abraham, had their feet washed, and ate the food that Abraham cooked. And Abraham, his servants, and Sarah saw them. So did Lot in Genesis 19. That's Genesis 18 and 19. Read it. We don't have time to read it. Is that clear now? So you see what Hebrews 1, 1 is saying? Yes, it was three persons, Medic, because it's a sign of the Trinity. Exactly, Medic. Lord willing, in a future session, I'll break it down. Yep, Medic, yep, exactly. Is it a coincidence it's three? Nope, no coincidence. But Lord willing, I'll do that in a future session. But focus with me here now. So do you see how God would speak to people in the Old Testament? He'd appear to prophets in dreams and visions. Or he would send angelic creatures to them. Or Jesus himself would be sent by the Father as the angel of God appearing to the prophets to speak to the Israelites. Let me show you another way that God spoke or two other ways that God spoke to the Israelites through the prophets. Are you ready? Are you ready? So guys, I'm going to have to do multi-parts on Hebrews 1 verses 1 to 2. Oh, 16 and gets better. Are you ready? How did God, because in Hebrews 1, 1 to 2, who is the God that spoke to the Israelites? Let's look at Hebrews 1, 1 to 2 one more time. Let me show you again. So you understand... Which God is being referred to in Hebrews 1, 1 verses 1 to 2? Let's read it one more time. Because I'm going to show you some amazing, mind-blowing stuff. Hebrews 1, verses 1 to 2. Protestant, did you get raptured? Leave us behind? Poor guy. He's doing his best. God bless him. God, who at sundry times and in diverse manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets, hath in these last days spoken to us by his son. God now speaks to us by his son. So when the author of Hebrews says God spoke to the Israelites, which person of God is he referring to? God spoke to our fathers in the past through the prophets in various ways at different times. Which person of God? God refers to who, who here? Read it again. See, guys. Who is the God that Hebrews is referring to? Who is the God that spoke? St. Dennis, you're not paying attention. See, this is why I asked the question. Protestant believer, you're not paying attention. Let's try it again. You guys are disappointing me now. None of you are paying attention. And I'm going to say shame on you and love. Shame on you for not paying attention. Shame on all of you. It's in front of your eyes. God spoke to the prophets, has spoken to us through his son in the last days. So you're saying Jesus is his own son and Jesus spoke through himself. And I say this in love. Don't get angry, but shame on you that you're not reading this. Let's read it again. This is what disappoints me. Why do you read the Bible without understanding? Let's try it again. No, it's not the son, Tom Nance. I'm going to repeat it again. Shame on you for repeating what I just corrected. 
Let's read it again. Hebrews 1, verses 1 to 2. Why do you think I asked? Because I know you're not paying attention. Sometimes I got to be harsh with you. Like a parent to a child. God, who at, at sundry times and diverse manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets, hath in these last days spoken to us by his son. How are you going to tell me the God who is speaking to the prophets is the son when it says God that spoke to the prophets now speaks by his son? Hello? Let's try it again. Who is the God that spoke through the prophets in the Old Testament? In Hebrews 1, 1 and 2. God refers to who here? Which person of Yahweh, Enzo, because Jesus is Yahweh. You're not answering my question. So, Rick, God, Moses is God. Excellent. Let's try it again. Who is the God that spoke to the prophets who now speaks by his son? Alex, let's try this again. Which person of Yahweh? You guys are disappointing me. Don't make me shut down the session. Kimberly, how can it be the Holy Spirit when it says this God now speaks to us by his son? You see why you guys need to be ashamed? How dare you not understand the scriptures? Sorry, folks. Get angry with me. I'm not here to tickle your ears. You don't like it? Leave. God who spoke by the prophets speaks by his son. Who is the God who spoke by the prophets? Last chance, folks. Enzo, I, I think I'm going to have to ban bounce you. How can it be the Holy Spirit, Enzo, when the Holy Spirit is not the father of Jesus? My goodness. <whistles> wow. One more time, Hebrews 1, 1 and 2. Soldier of Christ, if you repeat Jehovah, not tell me which person of Jehovah, you're going to force me to block you, brother. Hebrews 1, 1 and 2. Exactly, Lopez. Their pastors are dropping the ball, not educating them. Shame on these pastors, these shepherds, who are failing to do their job. One more time, God, who at sundry times... And diverse manners, this God in the past spoke to the fathers by the prophets. So God spoke by the prophets. In these last days, this God speaks by his son. Who is the God that spoke through the prophets in the Old Testament? Who now speaks to us by the son? Jesus is the son of who? It says this Jesus is the son of this God. He's the son of this God who spoke through the prophets. This God who spoke through the prophets, Jesus is his son. Zarina, who's God himself when Jesus is God too? My goodness. Virtual, you got it. Da Doha wa got it. Black Smurf, you got it. Alex. This is your last chance of getting right. I want to bounce you. Jesus, the Spirit, and the Father are the one true living God. Which person of God? Okay, Alex, you got it. Sai Christian, you got it. Rick, you got it. Okay, bra, I love you, bra. You got it. Okay. If you guys keep telling me Yahweh God, the bounce is coming. What's the answer now? God speaks to us by his son. That God who speaks by his son spoke through the prophets in the past. You see why it takes me so much time to make a point? Because I want to educate you. And sometimes I'm going to put the fear of God in you. Scare the hell out of you, literally. Right? Because it gets you nervous. Thank you, God the Father. <whistles> wow. Why was that hard, folks? Why was that hard? Good, Eli. God bless you, brother. YouTube, don't add to Hebrews 1, 1 to 2. Go with Hebrews 1, 1 to 2. Hebrews says, God who speaks to us by his son now is the same God that spoke to the prophets. 
That's not Jesus in them. That's God the Father. Send YouTube on his merry way. No, surely you got it. God the Father spoke through the prophets, and God the Father now speaks by his Son. Simple, right? Andrew got it the first time. The reason why I'm getting upset, folks, two reasons. Let me tell you why. You guys and I live in fast food theology. We don't have the patience anymore to study carefully, slowly, to understand Scripture. We want everything in a rush. 20-minute sermons, fast food theology, like our fast food. And secondly... God forbid, Andrew, may the Lord save you for his glory. Secondly, what a sad, pitiful state of affairs that pastors today are failing in their duties because they're producing illiterate Christians. Shame on these pastors for not doing their job. It took me nearly 10 minutes to explain a point that should have took less than a minute. Right? This should have been less than a minute. Shame on these pastors. The church in America has become a joke, churchianity. Thank God there are still true churches and true men of God, but it's not, you're not going to find them in these. Anyway, let's stop there. You're going to find it by going to Benny Hinn. He just repented. <laughs> yeah. Everyone's been sending me this video. Benny Hinn repented. You know when I'm going to know Benny Hinn repented? When he refunds all the people that he's built and made millions off of. Right? That's true repentance. What did Jesus say to the rich man? One thing you lack to be perfect. Go sell all you possess and give to the poor and you have riches in heaven and follow me. Benny Hinn, you know what I'm going to know you repented? When you take your multi-millions bilking the people of God and, and becoming fat off of them, and you give the money to the people of God and choose to live in a one-bedroom apartment. Then come talk to me about repenting, you wicked agent of the devil. May the Lord have mercy on us and save us in Jesus' name. Right? Okay, now, let's go back to the point. Let's go back to the point. In Hebrews 1, the God who spoke to the prophets in the Old Testament is the God who now speaks to us by his son, Jesus Christ. That God who speaks to us by his son, Jesus Christ, was the God who spoke to the fathers by the prophets. So who is that God that spoke to the prophets in the Old Testament, who now speaks to us by his son? Reduso, what's going to redeem you is stop accusing me falsely before I condemn you and bounce you, because let me repeat the words of Jesus, Red Russo. Hold on. Red Russo, did you hear me quote what Jesus said to the rich man? Sell all you have and give to the poor and you have riches in heaven and follow me. So was Jesus teaching work salvation, Red Russo, yes or no, for falsely accusing me like a slanderer? Yes or no, Red Russo? Hold on, let me correct this liar for now slandering me even though I thought he's a brother. No, you're not. You just said you sound like you're teaching works theology. You sound like works can redeem um, a brother, a man, brother. Don't ever falsely accuse me and imputing to me a false gospel. Don't pretend to me my brother and then slander me this way. I don't handle slander and lies. Sorry, guys. Distraction again. I apologize. Forgive me, brethren. See, Satan does getting upset. I haven't even finished the point. Lord, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy on us. Okay. Let's go. Okay. Man, Satan got angry, didn't he? I can't even finish this point. My goodness, we rebuke you in the name of Jesus, by the blood of Jesus, by the fire of the Holy Spirit. Okay. Okay. So, Lord, have mercy and forgive me, Lord. I'm a work in progress. Okay, now coming back to the issue. 
Yep, let me work on you, Pastor. Let me work on you. Pastor Festus. Yeah, you're Festus, all right. Let me work on you. Don't get upset at us because... Anyway, why, why even stoop to the level of a dog? All righty then. We there now? Hey, yearning truth. I love you, brother. You know I love you, right? All right. Let me explain. This is not anger in the sense of just angry for no reason. I'm being angry for a reason. Here's why. Let me tell you why I'm angry. It really hurts my heart to see how churches are failing to educate my brothers and sisters in Christ. Right? And then what bothers me is people falsely accusing me of things I don't believe. Because they don't want to hear what I'm saying, but impute things to me that I didn't say. It disgusts me. You guys ready now? Keep accusing me, brethren. Like I told you, let me repeat. I'm not for you. Find someone else. Let me repeat again. I don't want to be unnecessarily offensive, but I'm not here for a popularity contest. You don't like the style of preaching. If I'm sinning, God save me from it. Change me. But until then, find someone else. Leave. I'm not asking you to stay here. Let me repeat again. Leave. Sorry, I'm going to offend many of you. Don't come back. No one's putting a gun to your head. Go find someone else. There'll be someone else that will be more suitable for you. Now, with that said, Andrew, you ready? Okay. Who is the God that spoke through the prophets? I couldn't even get to this point. Unbelievable. Ten minutes, I couldn't even get to this point. Okay. Who is the God... Who spoke through the prophets in the Old Testament? Did you get it now? Good. God the Father. All right. But God the Father spoke through the prophets to the Israelites in various ways, right? This is the point I'm trying to get you at. God the Father spoke through the prophets in various ways, through various means. And I showed you a couple of those ways. Dreams, visions, appearing in time and space. But he also spoke th through the prophets by Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. So God the Father in the Old Testament used the Son and the Holy Spirit to speak through the prophets to the Israelites. Can I now prove that? Can I now prove that? That's, that's the point I was trying to lead you to. Can I prove that Jesus and the Spirit were two of the ways that the Father used to speak through the prophets? Now, we all know about the angel of the Lord, right? I have a two-part session on my YouTube channel on the angel of God in the Old Testament being Jesus Christ. So go there and listen to those two parts. There I show you that Jesus Christ appeared in the Hebrew Bible as the angel of the Lord sent by the Father to speak to the prophets. For the sake of time, I'm just going to give you one example. All right? I'm going to give you one example. Genesis 31, 10 to 13. Genesis 31, 10 to 13. It doesn't say son of man, Douglas, but it says the voice of Yehovah. Genesis 31, 10 to 13. Genesis 31, 10 to 13. Watch here. Yes, he does. And it came to pass at the time that the cattle conceived that I lifted up mine eyes and I saw in a dream. And behold, notice dream again. Dream. I'm dreaming. The rams which leaped upon the cattle were rings straight, speckled, and gristled. And the angel of God. Bam. The angel of God. Spake unto me in a dream, saying, Jacob, and I said, Here am I. And he said, Lift up now thine eyes, and see all the rams which leap upon the cattle are ring straight, speckled and gristled. For I, notice he says, It's the angel speaking to me. Now notice how the angel speaks. For I, the angel, have seen all that Lebanon doeth unto thee. I am the God of Bethel. 
No, Norley, stop chiming in. This is not a spirit creature. The angel says to Jacob, I, the angel, am the God of Bethel. I am the God of the house of God. Beth means house. Il means God. I am the God of the very house you erected for God. I am the God of that house where thou anointest the pillar and where thou vowed a vow unto me. Now arise, get thee out from this land and return unto the land of thy kindred. So here the angel of God appears to Jacob in a dream telling Jacob, I've seen what your father is doing to you, so I've come to save you. I've come to deliver you because I am the God of that house that you erected in honor of God, which you called the house of God. I am the God of the house. And when you made a vow to me that if I protect you, I'd be your God. Well, I'm living up to my bargain. I am protecting you. So I am your God and submit to me. And that was Jesus Christ telling Jacob, I am your God. You made a vow to me, and I, Jesus, who is the messenger of the Father, who happens to be your God, have come to deliver you to keep my end of the bargain so that you will submit to me as your God. Clear? Here's a dream, and the angel of God, who is God, who speaks as God, who does what only God can do, appears to Jacob. That's Jesus Christ. Now, you remember in John 1, it says, in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and the word was God. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Okay. Remember, the word of God, who is God. The word of God, who is God. Jeremiah 1, 4 to 5. Jeremiah 1, 4 to 5. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, the Word was God. The Word of God, who is God, who then became flesh. Jeremiah 1, 4 to 5. No, that doesn't say Son of Man, Douglas. Stop adding the word Son of Man, please, for the love of Christ. Jeremiah 1, 4 to 5. Then the Word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Then the Word of the Lord came unto me, saying, I'm going to repeat it three times. Then the Word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee and ordained thee a prophet unto the nation. See, you guys didn't catch it. Who now came to Jeremiah speaking to Jeremiah? Post Jeremiah 1, 4 to 5 again. Don't give me the word Jesus. Give me what's in the text. What's the text say? Jeremiah 1, 4 to 5. Can, I'll, I'll give you $10 million if you show me the word Jesus. Jeremiah 1, 4 to 5. Post it again, brother. We're waiting for Protestant. Poor guys having a hard time today. Slower than usual. Then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Before I formed thee in the, in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee, ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Wow. The word of God appeared to Jeremiah, and the word of God said to Jeremiah, I created you in the womb, and even before I created you, I had already chosen you to be my prophet, set you apart to be my prophet, which is why I created you. The word of the Lord is saying this. But according to John 1, that's the word of the Lord that became flesh, became Jesus Christ. Now let's read Jeremiah 1, 4 to 10. Jeremiah 1, 4 to 10. Let's read it all in context. Then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. I, the word, formed you in the belly, I knew you. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I set you apart. I, the word, and I ordained you a prophet unto the nations. Then said I, Ah, Lord God, Adonai, Yehovah. So notice, the word of God is God, because Jeremiah calls him God, right? <clears throat> ah, Adonai, Yehovah, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a child. But the Lord said, see, the word of the Lord is the Lord. 
When the word speaks, God speaks. But the Lord said unto me, Say not, I am a child. For thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee. And whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. Be not afraid of their faces, for I am with thee to deliver thee, saith Yehovah. Now watch this. The word of the Lord, who is the Lord, who is God, the creator, appears in human form, a visible form, with an outstretched hand. Because notice verse 9. Then the Lord put forth his hand, touched my mouth, and the Lord said unto me, Yahweh said unto me, Behold, I put my words in thy mouth. See, I have this day <clears throat> set thee over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out, to pull down, to destroy, to throw down, to build, and to plant. Now read verse 11, so you have no doubt it's the word of the Lord. Verse 11, the word of the Lord, who is the Lord, who is God, who appoints people, who empowers people, who is with them to accomplish his will, who creates them. Jeremiah 111. Now watch here. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me saying, the word of the Lord speaks. He appears in visible form. He has a hand. He appoints. He sets apart. He empow empowers. He remains with. And he creates. Sure sounds like John 1. Did you guys catch it? So how did God the Father speak to the prophets, to the Israelites? One of the ways that he spoke to the prophets, to the Israelites, is through Jesus Christ, who appeared in the Old Testament as the word of the Lord and the angel of the Lord. In fact, the word of the Lord is the angel of the Lord. The angel of the Lord is the word of the Lord. Why? Because what is an angel? A messenger who delivers God's word. What is the, the word of the Lord? A messenger who delivers God's word, who reveals God's word. So the word of the Lord is the angel of the Lord. The angel of the Lord is the word of the Lord because that's simply two different ways of speaking of the same person. The divine person sent by the Father to speak on God's behalf, to make God's will known to people who happens to be God, who then becomes Jesus. I love Jeremiah 15, 16. <laughs> that, why are you doing that first last? That was the other passages we're going to use. Okay, Zechariah 4, verses 8 to 9. Exactly out, Darius. I'm sure you missed these Bible classes, don't you? God willing, when I come, I'm going to be doing weekly classes, so I expect you guys to show up, man. We'll find a place. Pray for that, please. God, release me. Then my daughters will come and join me. Zechariah 4, 8 to 9. Guys, let's see if you catch this. Thank our brother Protestant. Zechariah 4, 8 to 9. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me saying, man, how many times does this word of God show up? The word of the Lord came unto me saying, the hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundation of this house. His hand shall also finish it. And thou shalt know when Zerubbabel, Zerubbabel does what I tell you, Zechariah, when Zerubbabel does what I tell you, then you'll have no doubt. The Lord of hosts sent me unto you. Sent who to him? Zechariah, I'm going to prophesy. Zerubbabel will lay the foundation of this house. And when he does, then have no doubt that I was sent to you by Yahovah of hosts. Who's speaking? Who's telling Zechariah, when my word comes to pass about Zerubbabel, then you'll know the Lord of hosts, Yahovah of hosts, has sent me to you. Who's, who's speaking, folks? Did you catch it? Protestants getting tired of posting these verses again. One more time. But wait, folks. How can the word of the Lord speak to Zechariah? How can the word of the Lord tell Zechariah, the Lord sent me to you, if the word of the Lord is not a person distinct from God? So did you see these examples? The word of the Lord is not simply God's voice or command or scripture. The word of the Lord is actually a person sent by the Lord who speaks to people who claims what only God can do. Like he told Jeremiah, I, the word, created you in the womb, Jeremiah. I appointed you to be my prophet. I am with you and appeared visibly and touched his mouth with his hand. <whistles> 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 
In other words, in John 1, when John said, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, John wasn't introducing anything new. Any Jew living at the time of John would have said, Amen, John, we know that. In the beginning, there's the Word. He's with God, distinct from God, sent by God, who appeared to our ancestors. We know him. The only new thing that John added was, oh, yeah, the Word became flesh. They'd say, wait, 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 what? what? Wait, 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 John. You're telling us this Word that appears in the Old Testament that we're reading about became a flesh and blood human being? Yeah. You're out of your mind, John. No, he did. Who is he, John? The one you nailed to the cross, Jesus. Whoa. John, you're telling us the word that appeared to our ancestors, the word who spoke to Abraham, the word who accompanied Jeremiah, the word who came to Zechariah, the word who creates, the word who gives life, the word who saves, the word who empowers his servants with his words. That's Jesus Christ? Yeah. You got it now? I want to give you two more examples. And I'm going to show you that God the Father spoke by the Holy Spirit. Okay? So God the Father in the Old Testament spoke to the prophets and to the Israelites by Jesus, his word, his angel, and by the Holy Spirit. Okay? Two more examples. Are you ready? Two more examples. You ready for two more examples? Am I boring you with this? Okay. Genesis 15, verses 1 to 3. Let's break it down in two, two sections. You know, someone said something interesting. Dave Hoxton. What did you say, Dave? You're kind of upset that it took you all these years to finally learn this? You see how disgusting the state of churchianity has become? Genesis 15, verses 1 to 3. After these things, read with me. After these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abraham in a vision saying, there goes the word again. The word of Yahovah came to Abraham in a vision saying, fear not, Abraham. I am thy shield and thy ex exceeding great reward. Wow. Again, huh? And Abraham said, sovereign Lord, Adonai Yahovah, Lord Jehovah. What wilt thou give me, seeing I go childless, and the steward of my house is this Eliezer of Damascus? I have no sons, no heirs. So what do you, now notice the word is now called God. So he knows this word is his God. My God, what are you going to give me? You left me childless. Watch verse 3. And Abraham said, Behold, <clears throat> to, to me thou hast given no seed, and lo, one born in my house is mine heir. Now watch this. Watch this. Verses 4 to 6. Guys, I need your attention. 4 to 6, because I want to watch. I want you to watch verse 5. Verses 4 to 6. Genesis 15, verses 4 to 6. And behold, the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Here the word again appears. This shall not be thine heir. Your servant won't be your heir. But he that shall come forth out of thine own bowels shall be thine heir. I promise to give you a son. Guys, pay attention to five and six, though. And he, the word, brought him, Abraham, forth abroad. The word took Abraham outside and said, look now toward heaven. Guys, what is the implication here? What does it mean that the word brought him abroad, took him outside? That means the word appeared visibly in visible shape inside the tent where Abraham was. Abraham was in the tent. The word appeared in the tent in visible form and said, Abraham, come on out. Come out because I want to show you the stars. Look at the stars, Abraham. Re read five with me. And he brought him forth abroad and said, look now toward heaven. So he's standing visibly and he's seeing invisibly. Look now toward heaven. And tell the stars, if thou be able to number them, and said unto him, so shall thy seed be. Now notice why Abraham was justified. And he, Abraham, believed in Jehovah, and he counted it to him for righteousness. Wow. The word of Jehovah appeared to Abraham visibly. 
The word of Jehovah appeared to Abraham in the tent. The word of Jehovah made a promise to Abraham. I will give you so many sons, they can't be numbered. The word of Jehovah took him outside to see that's how many sons you'll have. And then when Abraham saw the word speak to him and make a promise, Abraham says, I believe in you. And then the word justified him. Guys, did you catch it? Abraham was justified by believing in Jesus Christ who appeared to him before he became flesh. Hmm. Let that sink in for a moment before we move on. Jesus has always been there in the Old Testament with the Holy Spirit. Always. Send his dog on his merry way. Jesus has been there from the beginning with the Holy Spirit appearing and making the Father known. Clear? I'm going to give you a final example. But before I give you the final example, pay attention because I need your feedback. We're going to read about Samuel. Samuel was entrusted to the high priest Eliezer. Guys, follow with me. Samuel was entrusted to the high priest Eliezer. Guys, you got to listen here. That means Eliezer taught Samuel from his youth the written word of God, the law of Moses, told him about the history of the people, and told him about Jehovah, right? So did Samuel know the written word of God, and did he know about Jehovah since his youth when he was committed to the trust of Eliezer to work in the tent? So did Samuel know the written word of God? Did he know the writings of Moses and the prophets? Did he know it? Yes or no? So did he know about Jehovah? Did he know about Jehovah? He knew, right? So he knew about Jehovah. He knew the written word of Jehovah because he had the scriptures of the prophets. So he had the written word. The written word, right? Okay. Here's where it's going to get exciting. 1 Samuel chapter 3. Verses 1 to 5. Let's post verses 1 to 5. 1 Samuel chapter 3, verses 1 to 5. Watch here, guys. Get blown away. Get blown away. 1 Samuel chapter 3, verses 1 to 5. Andrew, you following with me? Now, Andrew, as an atheist, how do you account for the supernatural consistency between the two books? 1 Samuel chapter 3, verses 1 to 5. Read with me. And the child Samuel, notice, since a child, he ministered, served unto Jehovah. So he knew of Jehovah. He knew the law of Moses and the writings of the prophets. So he knew the written word. And the word of Jehovah was precious in those days. There was no open vision. Catch two things. The word of Jehovah was rare. And there was hardly any visions from God. Notice those two things. The word of Jehovah rarely showed up and hardly any visions. And it came to pass at that time when Eli was laid down in his place and his eyes began to wax dim that he could not see. Watch here. Three and five to five. And ere the lamp of God went out in the temple of Jehovah where the ark of God was. So it was night. They're asleep. And Samuel was laid down to sleep. Now watch this, folks. Okay. That Jehovah called Samuel and he answered, here am I. And he ran unto Eli, because now Samuel thought it's Eli. The voice of Jehovah sounded like Samuel. Watch this. And he ran unto Eli and said, Here am I, for thou calledst me. And he said, I called not. Lie down. And he went and lay down. Right? Now, why did Eli, Samuel think it was Eli calling him? Here's the answer. 1 Samuel 3, 6-7. Get ready to be blown away. Some of you already know this, because we've taught this for years. 1 Samuel 3, 6 to 7. Here's where you're going to get blown away. 1 Samuel 3, 6 to 7. And Jehovah called yet again Samuel. And Samuel arose, went to Eli and said, Here am I, for thou didst call me. And he answered, I called not my son. Lie down again. Now why didn't he recognize Jehovah? Verse 7. 
Now Samuel did not yet know Jehovah, neither was the word of Jehovah yet revealed unto him. Bam! Samuel knew of Jehovah, but did not know him personally because he could not know him personally without the word of God making Jehovah personal to him. Bam! He knew of God, read about God, but did not God know God intimately because the word did not come to him yet. In other words, you need Jesus to know God personally. You need Jesus to know God intimately. You can know of God, but you can't know him intimately until Jesus, the word, makes him known. 1 Samuel 3, 7. Let's read it again. 1 Samuel 3, 7. One more time. Why did he know this was Jehovah? Why didn't he recognize the voice of his creator? Because the word of God had not come to him. Here it is, verse 7. 1 Samuel 3, 7. Read. Now Samuel did not yet know Jehovah, neither was the word of Jehovah yet revealed unto him. That's why Jesus had not yet come to Samuel to reveal God to him. So Jesus finally shows up. Now it's time for you, Samuel, to know God intimately. That's why I'm here. So now 1 Samuel 3, 20 to 21. 1 Samuel 3, 20 to 21. First Samuel 3, 20 to 21. We're almost done. And all Israel from Dan even to Beersheba knew that Samuel was established to be a prophet of Jehovah. And Jehovah appeared again in Shiloh, for the Lord Jehovah revealed himself to Samuel Shiloh by the word of Jehovah. Bam! So now God had sent Jesus to make himself known to Samuel. Wow! This confirms what John said in John 1. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God, and then the word became flesh. And confirms John 1.18. John 1.18. Let's read it. He was taught about God, surely, exactly. But now he knew God personally. Meaning, folks, you can be reading the Bible, going to church, and still not know God until you know Jesus, and Jesus comes and dwells in your heart. You need Jesus. Word of God become flesh. Son of God, born of the Blessed Virgin Mary by the Holy Spirit, come to me. Live in my heart. Make God known to me. I need you. John 1, 18. No man has seen God at any time. Say at any time. That includes Samuel's time. At any time. Samuel's time, Moses' time. None of them could have comprehended God except the only begotten son, which is in the bosom of the father. He hath declared him. Did you catch it? John 1, 18 says, all of these prophets, the patriarchs, got to know God personally, intimately. Fall in love with him as he was in love with them because the son in the bosom of the father sprang forth and came to them as the word, making God personal and intimate to them. You caught it? This confirms Matthew eleven twenty seven. 27. Matthew eleven twenty seven. 27. Andrew, what do you think it is so far? Exactly. We need to know Jesus personally and intimately. Matthew 11, 27. Watch here. All things, Jesus speaking, delivered unto me of my Father. No man knoweth the Son but the Father. Neither knoweth any man the Father save the Son. No one can know the Father except the Son, and to whomsoever the Son will reveal him. How could Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and Moses, and Samuel know the Father if the Son wasn't there making the Father known to them? So I established that one of the ways, one of the ways in which God the Father spoke to the prophets was through Jesus, right? Have we established that? Through Jesus, right? Jesus is that Word of God in the Old Testament, the Angel of God in the Old Testament. Who became flesh. We know him as Jesus of Nazareth. He's coming. Keep praying. He's coming. He's hungry. Why do you think he's here every day? He's hungry. 
Yeah, love light. He is an open atheist who's going to fall in love with Jesus as Jesus loves him. Watch. It's a matter of time. Okay. Keep praying for him. Okay. You with me there? Now let me show you how God the Father spoke by the Spirit. The third person of the Godhead. Are you ready? God the Father spoke to the prophets by his Spirit. 2 Samuel 23, 2 to 3. 2 Samuel 23, verses 2 to 3. Yeah, he's all that. Secular Zionist, humanist, transhumanist. 2 Samuel 23, 2 to 3. Watch here. The Spirit of the Lord, Jehovah, spake by me. This is David speaking. And David says, it's the Spirit of God who speaks by me. His word, the Spirit's word, was in my tongue. The God of Israel said, the rock of Israel spake to me. He that ruleth over, over men must be just, ruling in the fear of God. Did you catch it? David says, these words that I'm speaking and writing down, it's the Spirit of God that is speaking these words to me and through me. The Spirit of Jehovah speaks by my mouth. It's the word of the Spirit on my tongue. And when the Spirit speaks, it's Jehovah speaking, the God of Israel. Did you catch it? Notice the two things that David knew. It's the Spirit revealing God's words to me. It's the Spirit using my mouth to speak and write God's words down. And when the Spirit speaks, it's the God of Israel speaking. How did David know that? How did David know that? Did you catch it? 2 Samuel 2 to 23, 2 to 3. He knew it because the Spirit revealed it to him. That's my point. David would not know that he's writing down the words of the Spirit and the Spirit is speaking through him if the Spirit didn't speak to him and let him know that. You caught it? Yeah, leave Andrew alone now, love light. Stop having a side conversation with him. Leave him alone. Focus. Okay, Ezekiel 2.2. 2. Is David the only one? Ezekiel 2.2. 2. Amen. I need him to be with me and my children. Ezekiel 2.2. 2. Watch here. And the Spirit entered into me when he spake unto me and set me upon my feet that I heard him that spake unto me. So now Ezekiel knows the Spirit entered me to empower me to speak to Jehovah. Ezekiel 3.24. Ezekiel 3.24. Ezekiel 3.24. Then the Spirit entered into me and set me upon my feet and spake with me, and said unto me, go shut thyself within thine house. Wow. So here, Ezekiel says, the Spirit entered me. When he set me on my feet, then the Spirit told me to shut myself in the house. Wait, Ezekiel. You're telling me God spoke to you by sending the Spirit to enter you? Yeah. And then the Spirit told you what to do and what to say? Yeah. So you're aware that Jehovah speaks by the Spirit to his servants? Yes. If I didn't know that, I wouldn't mention it. Ezekiel 11, verse 5. Ezekiel 11, verse 5. Watch here. And the Spirit of Jehovah fell upon me and said unto me, Speak thus, saith Jehovah. Wait. The Spirit of Jehovah fell on me. And said unto me, Speak, thus saith Jehovah. Thus have ye said, O house of Israel, for I know the things that come into your mind, every one of them. Hmm. The Spirit enters me. The Spirit comes upon me. The Spirit sets me on my feet, tells me what to do and what to say. Look at his dirty bastard because of his mother being man. See, this guy just cussed out Jesus. People are going to wonder why I'm cussing him out. A dirty bastard because his mother is a whore. He just blasphemed Jesus. You filthy dog. Dogs are cleaner than you and your mother. Sorry, you insult Jesus. I'm going to insult you. Scum bastard. You're not being Christ-like, Sam. You get lost too. All right. You ready? 
Nehemiah, the book of Nehemiah, chapter 11, verse 20. Nehemiah, chapter 11, verse 20. You insult Jesus, watch what I'll do to you. Yes, medic, it's all the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of God, the Spirit is the Holy Spirit. Nehemiah 11, 20. And the residue of Israel, no, 9, 20, not 11, 20. Did I say 11, 20? That's your fault, Protestant. I said 9, 20. No, I'm kidding. I made a mistake because this guy got me animated. He just cussed out Jesus. Warning, you cuss out Jesus, I will cuss you and your mother out. And remind you of who your mother is. Don't you dare insult God in front of me. And I guarantee you won't do it in front of my face. Okay. Now my 920, thou gavest also thy good spirit to instruct them. Did you catch it? You, God, gave your good spirit to instruct them. Wait, Nehemiah, you're telling me that God's spirit is good and God sends his spirit to instruct the people? Yes. Thou gavest also thy good spirit to instruct them and withheldest not thy manna from their mouth and gavest them water for their thirst. Hmm. Nehemiah 9.30. It was wickedly blasphemous, surely. He used the F word against Jesus. Nehemiah 9.30. Nehemiah chapter 9, verse 30. Nehemiah chapter 9, verse 30. Watch here. We're almost done. Yet many years didst thou forbear them and testify against them by thy spirit. You testify, testified against the Jews in their sin by your spirit in thy prophets. By your spirits in thy prophets. Let me repeat again. You warn, rebuke, threaten the Israelites by sending your spirit to warn them in your prophets, the spirit speaking through them. So guys, guys, are you telling me that Nehemiah knew that God sent his good spirit, his Holy Spirit, to instruct the Israelites and warn the Israelites through the mouth of the prophets? Nehemiah knew that? That's a good sign, choose Jesus. That means we're preaching truth. Je Nehemiah knew God sent his spirit, who is good, to speak through the prophets, in the prophets, warning, teaching, threatening. Is You guys seeing that? Focus. You sent your good spirit to instruct them. You warned them by your spirit in the prophets. Zechariah 7.12. I'll give you two more for the sake of time. Zechariah 7, 12. Two more for the sake of time. Zechariah 7, 12. Focus, guys, in Jesus' name. Focus on the evidence. Zechariah 7, 12. Watch here. Then, I this time it's your fault, Protestant. I said 7, 12. I don't know why seven sound like one. You're going to get hurt, brother, and you're going to love it. Zechariah 7, 12. You sinner. Just because you're doing me a favor for free, you think I'm going to be nice to you. Zechariah 7, 12. Watch here. Sinner. And he's white, too. What does that tell you? Eight or wood? Yea, they made their hearts as an adamant stone, lest they should hear the law and the words which Jehovah of hosts had sent in his spirit by the former prophets. In his spirit by the former prophets. So Zechariah knows when the prophets spoke Jehovah's words, it's because the Holy Spirit was in them speaking through them. <whistles> Final one, Micah 3.8. Micah 3, verse 8. Just because you're white too, Billy Mandalay? Hater. Oops, sorry. Oops. That was this game. Micah 3, 8. But truly, I am full of power by the Spirit of Jehovah. I, Micah, full of power by the Spirit of the Lord, Yehovah, and of judgment and of might to declare unto Jacob his transgression and to Israel's sin. Have I been able to prove... Have I been able to prove from the Old Testament 
that God the Father spoke through the prophets to the Israelites by Jesus Christ, his son, known as the word of Jehovah in the Old Testament, the angel of Jehovah, and by his Holy Spirit. So that from the beginning, God the Father has spoken through the other members of the Trinity. Was that clear? Then let me end it real quick, and I'll pick it up tomorrow, Lord willing. I think I should have tomorrow uh, time. Yeah, I should be able to do a session tomorrow. I should be able to do one session tomorrow, God willing. I have a busy weekend. Okay, now, so Al, I hope you were blessed, brother. I'm sure you're missing these classes, right? There goes this son of, son of Satan, his whore again, insulting Jesus. Okay, now, let's go back to Hebrews 1, 2. Hebrews 1, 2. Block him permanently so he doesn't come back, this dog. Hebrews 1, 2. Andrew, you're comparing me to dead teachers? I'm not dead yet. <laughs> la, 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 la. All right. Hebrews 1, 2. Okay, read with me. Not three, man. Protestant, what's up with you, dude? Two becomes a three, and a seven becomes a one. Listen, white boy. We Middle Easterners rule, sucker. Okay. Kill whitey. Kill a white man. All right. Hebrews 1, 2. Hath in these last days spoken unto us by his son. Okay. Has in these last days spoken unto us by his son. Folks, this is where I need you to stop texting and pay attention. Hebrew says that in the Old Testament, God spoke to the fathers by the prophets in various ways. Well, I showed you some of those ways. It either appeared to a prophet in a dream or a vision. Or he'd actually appear in time and space visibly and or send Jesus the word, his angel or the Holy Spirit to speak, even created angels like Gabriel. Because in Daniel, Gabriel and Michael appear. But now it says in Hebrews 1, 2, in these last days, these days leading up to the return of Christ, he speaks by the son. What does it mean that he speaks by the son now? When he used to speak by the Son in the past. Do you want to understand what that means? Do you want me to blow your mind away? Shows you the supremacy of Christ. The preemin preeminence of Christ. The majesty of Christ. That it's all about him. That the Father and the Spirit do everything for the Son. Because they love the Son. Here's what it means. And tomorrow I'll unpack it God willing. Not tonight. So I'm going to whet your appetite. Here's what it means. In the past, when a revelation comes, it would be, thus saith Jehovah, in the name of Jehovah. Right now, all prophesying is, thus saith the Lord Jesus Christ, in the name of Jesus Christ. Meaning, every revelation from now on, every revelation from now on must be done in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. For the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ, by the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ. So what was the case of Jehovah in the Old Testament? Thus saith Jehovah, in the name of Jehovah, by the authority of Jehovah, in the New Testament becomes, thus saith the Lord Jesus, by the authority of the Lord Jesus, on behalf of the Lord Jesus, in the name of the Lord Jesus. All prophesying must be now done with the Lord Jesus in view. You know what that means? The New Testament equivalent of Jehovah, the New Testament equivalent of thus saith Jehovah, the Lord Jesus Christ. Oops. Jesus. Please go on. See? 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 The enemy's angry. You understand what it means? It's okay. It's back. Okay. You understand what it means? In the Old Testament is, thus saith Jehovah. Thus saith Yehovah. In the name of Jehovah. By the authority of Jehovah. Hear the word of Jehovah. Right? You with me there? But now that the Son has appeared, guess what? It's now, thus saith the Lord Jesus. By the authority of the Lord Jesus. 
You with me there? Is it, are you making sense? For the sake of the Lord Jesus, the word of the Lord Jesus. No, medic, because now Jehovah is known and understood in the person of Christ. The Jehovah that spoke is now the son that speaks. Jehovah has become the man Christ Jesus, which is why all prophesying must be done in his name, on his behalf, for his glory. And let me give you the proof of it. Am I good now? James, it's working now. You sent me a text message, but everyone says it's working. Revelation 19.10. Revelation 19.10. Okay. So even when Jesus came in the Old Testament, he would say, thus saith Jehovah, right? The Holy Spirit, thus saith Jehovah. Hear the word of Jehovah. Now in the New Testament is, thus saith the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. On behalf of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hey, uh, Andrew says I'm still frozen. Oh, no, okay, refresh, right? Here's the proof, Revelation 19.10. I'm going to repeat it again before I leave. I've been back, man. Everyone's been listening to me. I don't, in fact, if, uh, Protestant, it was your computer. Everyone's been listening to me because first and last posted Revelation 19.10. I've been on. Revelation 19.10. One more time. Okay, ready? Revelation 19.10. Let me explain it again. We're waiting for someone to post it before the rapture. And I fell at his feet to worship him, and he said unto me, See thou, do it not. I am thy fellow servant and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Jesus. Worship God, for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Bam! The heart of prophecy. The entire focus of prophecy is testify of Jesus Christ. Testify about Jesus Christ. Speak on behalf of Jesus. You see how it changed? In the Old Testament, Father, Son, and Spirit would say, Thus saith Jehovah, in the name of Jehovah, by the authority of Jehovah. Here's the word of Jehovah. Now it's, Thus saith the Lord Jesus Christ, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, for the sake of the Lord Jesus Christ, on behalf of the Lord Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord Jesus Christ is. In other words, folks, if Jesus isn't Jehovah, the New Testament has done something shocking. It has supplanted the name of Jehovah as the heart of prophecy with the name of Jesus Christ. So you Unitarian? All right, there you go. Okay, I had to, I'm refreshing. Is it good now? Is it good now? I froze for a minute. Hold on. Okay. That's Revelation 19.10, Jerry Wang. One more time. Revelation 19.10 and I'm done. Folks, you understand what that means? If Jesus is in Jehovah, the New Testament has done something shocking because it supplanted Jehovah as the heart of prophecy with the name of a creature. Blasphemy. Revelation 19.10. And I fell at his feet to worship him. And he said unto me, see thou, do it now. Notice what even the angel says. Notice what the angel says. I am thy fellow servant and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Jesus. You, your brothers, the prophets, all of us have the testimony of Jesus. Worship God for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. You know what the heart of prophecy is? Prophesying is all about testifying. You caught it? You see what the angel said? Your brethren, the prophet, you, I, were all slaves. Okay, am I okay now, Andrew? Oh, my goodness. Man, I'm about to finish. We keep freezing. Yeah, I want to finish the work. Okay. How about now? 
Okay, is it now? Okay, because I want to finish. How about now, Andrew? See, last 10 seconds and Satan's attacking. We're rebuking the name of Jesus. Okay. You see what the angel said in Revelation 19.10? The prophets, your brothers, you, I, were all slaves who hold to the testimony of Jesus. Because the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy, meaning the heart of prophecy, the very essence of prophecy. Prophesying has to be all about Jesus. In the Old Testament, prophesying was all about Jehovah. Now it's all about Jesus. If Jesus is not God, the New Testament has supplanted God with a creature, which would be blasphemy. The only way, yeah, Allah, Father, Holy Spirit, we rebuke you, Satan, in the name of Jesus. All right? Okay. Getting excited. Okay. The only way Jesus Christ can be the spirit of prophecy, that prophesying is all about Jesus, is if Jesus is Jehovah God in the flesh. So, now again, Old Testament, thus say Jehovah. New Testament, thus saith the Lord Jesus. Old Testament, hear the word of Jehovah. New Testament says, hear the word of the Lord Jesus Christ. Old Testament says, I come in the name of Jehovah. New Testament says, I come in the name of Jesus Christ. That's what it means that God now speaks by his son. It's all about my son. It's all about the glory of my son. It's all about proclaiming my son. It's all about preaching my son. It's all about loving my son. Living for my son and dying for my son. It's about him because he's Jehovah in the flesh. Is that clear? All right. Okay. I'm finished, folks. As long as I'm clear, I'm finished. That was it. Lord Jesus willing... Tomorrow is part two. Well, part three, really. Okay. I went two hours, man. Pray that people come and listen. Pray for more subscribers. Hit the like button and pray for me and my daughters. Please pray for miraculous deliverance in these 60 days that the blood of Jesus will save me from this corrupt judicial system. Lord Jesus, rebuke them for your glory. Pray the Lord sets me free to relocate in Arizona and trust to bring my daughters. Guys, pray for the ministry. I do this full time. God stirs your hearts, partner with me financially and pray. Lord willing, tomorrow we're going to do another live stream. Notice how long it took me to unpack Hebrews 1 verses 1 to 2. Hebrews 1 verses 1 to 2. I'll try to be on the same time tomorrow, God willing. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. Jesus is Yahovah to the glory of God the Father. Amen, Lord Jesus. Keep us holy. Wash us. Save our families. Save my children, Lord. Fill us with the Spirit to love you and not grieve you. You are worthy. It's all about you, the Father's beloved, the Father's heart, in Jesus' name. Love you guys. Pass this video on. Go listen to it again. Learn this stuff. Absorb it. Share it and use it. And pray for our ministry, please, for the support. Christ is risen. Al, see you soon, brother. Al, more to come if you're praying. When we I start living there, I'm going to do weekly studies, I promise, in Jesus' name. Sali Qali and my daughters.